Okay, so welcome back. Now the neutrophil is found here inside the tissue, right? So neutrophil is here. This neutrophil, which is here, now needs to reach the area where the pathogens are. So it's going to move from here to the pathogens. So let me take things out of its way. <laughs> so, okay. So the big action is coming, right? So the neutrophil is here. He is totally awake. Neutrophil is here. He knows that I need to reach this pathogen or I need to reach this area where the fight is going on and some debris is present. How does he, how does the neutrophil reach there? So this is how this happens. The process of reaching there by the neutrophil is called the chemotaxis. And what happens is that the area where damage is, we have tissue breakdown products over there. We have histamine, we have thrombin, we have uh, fibroblast secretions, we have uh, leukotrienes, we have interleukin-8, we have tumor necrosis factor. So there are many things. We have 5-HETE, which is one of the arachidonic acid metabolite. So I would say this, we would have C5A, which is a comp complement, which is cleaved. Complement cleavage means what? The complement protein was there and some, some cell over here has broken up the complement. You know that the complement gets activated by the, by the bacterial surface. So I would just very quickly tell this that when the complement come, remember we have uh, mano, mannose binding lectin or MBL. Similarly, we also have complement which when comes and sits on the surface of the bacteria. Bacteria knows I'm a goner as soon as the complement comes. When the complement comes here, let's say this is C5, the A part separates. So what would happen is the A part is separated from here, right? So this C5A is chemotactic. 5-HETE, that is the arachidonic acid pathway. So what happens is that when the cell membrane phospholipids are broken down, remember we have a cyclooxygenase pathway and we have a lipooxygenase pathway. These pathways give rise to bradykinanes and the leukotrienes and, the, and one of the, the components is 5-HETE. Then we have interleukin-8. You know where interleukin-8 comes from. Interleukin-8 comes from the macrophage, right? So these are, these are chemotactic factors and there are many other. These are called chemokines if these are chemotactic for macrophage and neutrophil. Why are they called chemokines? It stands for, chemo stands for chemotactic and keen stands for cytokine. So chemotactic cytokine is called a chemokine. What that means is it's a chemotactic factor for neutrophil and the macrophage and it is released by a cell. It's a cytokine. So how will this thing, how will the neutrophil reach this pathogen or this area where destruction is happening? Now when we have an area where destruction is happening, we have a lot of chemical substances present there, right? I'll make them green just to make them a little bit more conspicuous here. These pathogens, oh sorry, these chemical factors, of course, are then spread out in the tissue, right? The neutrophil and macrophage and any other cell which is going to do chemotaxis they have receptors on their surface which can bind these uh, substances. So in case of neutrophil, what are these receptors? So don't forget them. This is, this is a USMLE question. Uh, I haven't seen the questions, but. So the first is on the surface of neutrophil, we have a receptor which can bind immunoglobulin G. So that is for opsonization, but anyways, there is a receptor for this which is called FC gamma this IR. So that is one. Then on the surface, we have the complement receptor 1 and 3. 
which binds to the complement proteins. Then we have C1Q which binds the mannose binding lectin. So there are many receptors on the surface. Similarly, there are receptors for the chemotactic factors. When that receptor is engaged, when the chemotactic factor sits in the receptor, this is very important, that causes inside through the G protein, remember the second messenger systems, I would be delivering a lecture about those soon as well and we will put that in the YouTube as well. The, the second messenger system gets engaged, that second messenger system sends a message inside to the nucleus and what happens is that the cytoskeletal microtubular system is rearranged in a way that a pseudopod appears on this side. How is that done? So let us say the microtubules which are present here, remember microtubules are part of the cell, they are part of the cellular architecture, the roads and the bridges and the buildings, everything which is inside, many of these things have microtubules attached to them which are helping with the intracellular trafficking of organelle and the substances. There are actually little bridges in there on which motors move, so it is it's like a big huge city with the bridges and the roads and the cars going all the way. So these microtubular systems are taken down from the opposite side of the cell and they are moved to the side of the cell where the receptor is engaged, where the chemo and of course not all sides are engaged because if you take this as a rounded cell then wherever the destruction is happening the chemical substance concentration on that side is more. So more receptors will be engaged on that side as compared to on the other sides, make sense? So wherever the concentration and the engagement of receptors is more, the cell organelle would be torn down from the microtubules would be torn down from the other side and moved into that side. That would cause a pseudopod to appear and, and then the neutrophil macrophage or other cells which do chemotaxis, it would use that process to keep moving. So if I show it like this, let us say this is a neutrophil which has two compartments, I am just making it up for our example, then we will take down this room and we will build, we will use that infrastructure and material and build a room on this side. So we have moved, then we will tear down this room and use this material to build a room on this side and if you see the neutrophil now has moved from here to here, that is what is happening and this process is done because of the concentration of the chemotactic agents and that is sensed by the receptors on the surface of the neutrophil, it is a very cool mechanism, I really love it. So anyways, end of the day what is going to happen is that this neutrophil is going to end up here. So our star has reached here, so neutrophil is here, he is going to come and attack the system now, not, not the system, well he is going to attack our tissue too but he's going to now try to work with this pathogen and try to remove him. So now how does that happen? So the first thing is activation, first the neutrophil needs to be activated. So what have we gotten so far? Margination, then we got the, the rolling selectins, then we got the adhesion integrins, then we got transmigration CD31 and collagenase, then we got chemotaxis by chemotaxis receptors and chemotactic materials for example interleukin 8, C5A and so on, now it is here, now what? It needs to become activated, once it becomes activated then it would do phagocytosis, then it would do killing and then finally the debris will be removed. So be very careful we are talking about the activation right now. So what happens with the activation is simple, the neutrophil just like the macrophage we talked about in our previous lectures has pattern recognition receptors, PRRs, pattern recognition receptors, neutrophil also has tall like receptor, TLR, tall like receptor 4 with the CD, with the CD14 
cluster of differentiation 14 for designation. So CD14 and the tau-like receptor together, what happens is they recognize the, if it is 4, they recognize the lipopolysaccharide on the surface of the, of the gram negatives. So what I would do is I would make this tau-like receptor and the CD14 to be engaged here, right. So this tau-like receptor and the CD14 when they are engaged with the bacterial surface proteins, that is what is going to cause the activation. There is another type tau-like receptor 2 that connects with the gram positive bacteria, fungi and many other such things. Tau-like receptor 4 connects with the uh, lipopolysaccharides of the gram negative bacteria. Remember this, this, this is a very decent question to actually ask that hey we have a neutrophil it is engaged with a tau like receptor 4 with CD14 what do you think what type of infection is there? It is going to be gram negative infection. If tau like receptor 2 is engaged and that is a gram positive or fungi or other such uh, things. So anyways once it connects that allows the neutrophil to become activated. How? these these little proteins have their transmembranous components and intramembranous components which would then become activated, second messenger system would become activated that would tell the neutrophil that hey we have come across a pathogen. They both have to be engaged, just not the CD14 or not just the TLR, they both have to be engaged. So this is like a double key mechanism where two things have to become identifying the bacteria, then the neutrophil says fine I have come across something which I really should take care of. As soon as that happens, the neutrophil is going to start doing phagocytosis. So this is the activation. Activation is to recognize the pathogen and then start the process of phagocytosis. Can activation occur due to other things? Yes. What are the other things? Remember it has a receptor. We just talked about the receptors a few minutes back. It has receptors for the IgG. Right. So if the IgG is, so I'm going to clean up this area a little bit. So we have a little pathogen here. He is a little less happy because he knows something bad is happening. He has a good sense because our friend neutrophil here is actually on his case. Our friend neutrophil is going to kill him. So we have tall like receptor engage, we have CD14 engaged, then we know that some of these pathogens can get, so again not a very happy pathogen, they can get the immunoglobulin G attached to them. And we have not talked about immunoglobulins yet, we would talk about those in a future lecture. But imagine that immunoglobulin G has come and become attached. The neutrophil also have receptor for the FC portion of the immunoglobulin G. That would also cause activation and phagocytosis. Then we just talked about it in a few minutes back that some pathogens would also develop less happy pathogen. They would have MBLs, right? Manan binding lectins. These are part of the innate system. They are produced by the liver. They go and sit on the surface of the, uh, of, the, of the pathogen. So there is a receptor for the Manan binding lectin as well. So these things are the ones which would cause the activation of the neutrophil. 